I'm Sean Duclos. I'm an assistant uh, professor in clinical neurosciences at the University of Calgary, and I'm a member of the Smart Neural Prosthetics team. This is a daily problem at any one time on any rehabilitation ward across the country. We have people with pressure ulcers and often with deep pressure ulcers that are going through the skin, into the muscle, down to the bone. There certainly is a, a big psychological impact when someone has a pressure ulcer. Uh, oftentimes they smell bad. In addition to that, uh, people are at really high risk of developing infections and those infections really decrease the quality of life for the individual that has the pressure ulcer. During my course of my residency training, I had a fair bit of experience dealing with pressure ulcers, specifically in the spinal cord injury population, and trying to help heal the ones that had been developed. I saw a number of people go through surgery to put a skin flap over the area and cared for them. I was involved with debriding these very deep wounds, and the situation in a lot of cases is quite dire. Uh, the possibility of being able to prevent that from happening uh, it was quite inspiring. I'm Vivian Mushahwar. I am the leader of Project SMART, the AIHS-funded team. I'm a professor in the Center for Neuroscience at the University of Alberta. Why are we having difficulties with pressure ulcers, even though we have such um, huge improvements in medical care and in technologies to prevent pressure ulcers? So maybe we can take a step back and say, why don't people with intact sensation and mobility, why don't we develop pressure ulcers. Why don't we uh, sit in front of our computers for eight hours and still uh, not have a pressure ulcer at the end of the day? And that's because we fidget. We fidget all the time. People with reduced mobility and um, sensation do not fidget. They are dependent on someone else to move them. So we thought that perhaps we can come up with a system that would help them modulate or change their posture and fidget every so often and do it every six to ten minutes or something like that. And that's where electrical stimulation came in handy. And if you uh, stimulate the muscles that are experiencing pressure, like the muscles that we sit on, those are the muscles that break down because of um, uh, continued pressure. If you stimulate them and get them to cause this fidget and this change in posture, then perhaps we could restore some of that subconscious postural adjustments to them and help them prevent pressure ulcers. So how do we deliver this electrical stimulation to the muscles that we sit on? Of course, we, we wear underwear. So perhaps we can embed some electrodes or those just uh, thin patches that deliver electrical current to the skin. We can embed those in, uh, in the underwear and use that as an approach. Uh, of course, we went through multiple iterations of making this underwear hold uh, electrodes. The idea was to make it as innocuous as possible, as part of somebody's life as possible. To put it on and off should not be complicated. It really should be as easy as putting it on an underwear. I'm Daryl Kramer and I'm a stroke patient at the Glen Rose Rehabilitation Hospital and I've been here for the last two and a half months. I've been part of the Smarty Pants team and I'm the Timex torture test. I, uh, I know I have two uh, nieces who are OTs. And they tell me that uh, for many people bed sores are a real issue. I'm just hoping that someday this will be a reasonably common practice instead of being innovative. You know, maybe five years from now, this will be what everybody does all the time. And people wonder, why didn't we do this before? I'm Dr. Meng Chan. Uh, I'm a specialist in uh, rehabilitation medicine uh, here at the Glen Rose uh, Hosp Rehabilitation Hospital. Uh, but I also have a cross appointment as an academic as a professor in the Faculty of Medicine and Dentistry, University of Alberta. Ideas often start with you know, being small or maybe simple, but I think persistence is kind of one of the things I learned over the last few years, and also getting the right people together with different expertise. So I think that partnership between researchers, clinicians, but perhaps Importantly, is we very much want the patient and the family to be part of this. I think you know, in a uh, multidisciplinary environment, uh, in the current day healthcare, uh, if we can make each, each other partners, um, and, and you know, in a meaningful of, uh, way, uh, I think that's great. And I hope you know this project illustrates that. My hope is that we um, eradicate pressure ulcers. And um, perhaps Smarty Pants will not do it all the way, but together with other interventions, we could definitely do that. 
But I really think that smarty pants will, pick, it will play a very, very important role. And my hope is to see it as easily available to everyone as it's been to our volunteers so far. In other words, it's, um, it's accessible, it's available at clinical centers, it's easily prescribed uh, to those who need it. Um, and you could perhaps even pick it off the shelf if necessary. But make it easily accessible, available, reasonably priced so that everyone can have it.